um, for any of these, really. For the overlapping triangle problems, Samuel, are you with me? Put your games away. Um, for overlapping triangle problems, you need to look at what are they giving me, what's my given information, and what is it they're trying to get me to prove so that you can see which triangles are impacted by what you're doing. So for instance, this first set of information, they tell you that AR is congruent to LR. So for this information, they're telling you this whole side is congruent to this whole side, right? Which is a little bit hard to mark on this set of triangles because there's extra lines that are cutting things up a little bit. But that's the first thing they tell you. They also tell you um, PR, okay? So for your, um, I'm gonna go back to blue here, PR is congruent to IR. So if you think about those lines right now, um, I color coded them for you, which is probably a little more helpful than not having the colors, but you're gonna have to like train your brain to see this. Those are sides in which two triangles. What would the blue triangle be? Can you name that? LRP, this triangle, okay? Um, so we're gonna draw triangle LRP. Um, because we know we have information from it. So I'm going to draw here. This would be P, this would be R, this would be L. Okay. Now think about the triangle that matches that but overlaps it would be the one um, AIR. So this would be A, this would be R, this would be I. Oh, it's Ari. Look at that. It's just for you. Um, so let's mark what we know. AR is congruent to LR, and PR is congruent to IR. Okay. Now look at what they're asking you to prove. They're asking you to prove that AS is congruent to LS. Those are not sides of those two triangles, but those two triangles are the triangles that we have stuff for, okay? So what you have to do is you first have to prove that these two triangles are congruent so that we can use CPCTC to prove two other triangles will be congruent, okay? Um, so we're gonna just start with these two. How could I prove that these two triangles are congruent? My red and my blue. What? You might have been right. I just didn't hear what you said. Side what? Angle <laughs> R. Right. We're going to start with angle R. So step one is you're given, always. Um, we're going to next say that angle R is congruent to angle R because it's reflexive. Don't forget to mark that because then you see... SAS in both of those triangles, okay? So the next thing we're gonna say is triangle ARI is congruent to triangle what? LRP. LRP. Okay, um, the reason for that is we have SAS. Okay, now here's where we have to do a little bit of thinking. We know those two triangles are congruent. That means we know every set of corresponding things about them is congruent. So technically right now, we know that this side is congruent to this side. We know that this angle, uh, this angle is congruent to this angle. And we know that this angle is congruent to that angle. We don't need to say all those things because we don't need all of those things to get us to where we need to get, but it's your job to figure out what thing is going to get us there. So if you look at all that information and you look at what it is they're trying to get us to prove, this side congruent to this side is not one of those three things, right? But 
you have more triangles in the picture. Do you see another set of triangles that would maybe share things with this set of triangles? A, S, B, and L, I, S. Right. So you're going to use, let's just erase here. Um, you're going to use those two triangles. So let's do, I'll do one in green and one in purple. Um, so this triangle here, okay, that's PSA. And then this triangle here, and what do you notice right off the bat when you look at those two triangles? Do you see anything? Vertical angles, okay? So I'm gonna put the triangles together so that you can still see the vertical angles. Um, if you don't notice that, it's okay. You're just gonna wanna dig a little deeper once you're drawing it out. Um, so that one is PSA, this one is SIL. Okay, so we have those two triangles. Um, do we know, what do we know? What's gonna help us from these two triangles? That's the exact same in these two triangles. Do you see either angles that are the same or segments that are exactly the same? Let me highlight for you. So in our first, in our red triangle, right, this triangle here versus in our green triangle, which is this triangle here. Is there anything that matches up perfectly, a side or an angle? An angle, right? Um, okay, so we're gonna say this angle with that angle. So angle, um, and you gotta use three letters, even though it looks like, oh yeah, they're fine over here. In the grand scheme of things, there's multiple angles there. So you're gonna say angle RAI is congruent to angle RLP because of CPCTC, right? Because the two triangles were congruent, then those angles were. Well, now here's the thing, this angle and this angle, those are these angles, right? The lettering looks different because we use different triangles, but they are exactly the same angles. Do you see that? Okay. Okay, so in our two new triangles, we know that. Um, someone also said we have vertical angles. So this angle here, I'm gonna do single arcs. It's not the same as these single arcs. I just don't wanna make a mess, okay? So those two angles are vertical angles. So we're gonna say angle PSA is congruent to angle ISL because they are vertical angles, okay? which means we need one more thing about those two triangles to say that they're congruent so that we can say their parts are congruent, right? Because we're trying to get to this. We're trying to get to AS congruent to LS, right? Which means we can't use that because we don't know that. So there's gotta be another side or another angle that we know is congruent. Oh, right, okay, yes, that is true. We would know those third angles are congruent. Here's the issue. Um, is there a theorem called AAA? There's not, right? So it is true that those angles are congruent, um, but there's no AAA theorem to be able to use to prove the triangle's congruent. Do you see another something that has to be congruent? This one's really hard, by the way. This step is hard. So if you're not seeing it, you're not alone, I promise you. A, S, and S, L, is that what you said? Yeah. That's what we're trying to prove congruent, but we don't know they're congruent right now for any reason. A, C, and I, L. How do you know? Because in the triangle. <laughs> no, um, but it, those are the ones. Here's what we're gonna say. We're gonna say that A, P is congruent to I, L. Does anyone see why?
let's go back to our original picture real quick. Um, we know that this side is congruent to this side, right? Those are the big sides of these two triangles. This is a hot mess, I'm sorry. Um, we also know that this side is congruent to this side, right? That's these sides of that first triangle. Therefore, we can say that what is left here and what is left here will have to be congruent. Do you remember what that's called? It's not isosceles triangle. Uh, nope, but good thought. It's the segment addition postulate, right? Segment addition says this plus this has to equal the whole thing. This plus this has to equal the whole thing. So since we know the whole thing and we know the other part, the two parts that are left have to be equal to each other. Okay, so that's segment addition postulate. Don't stress over that one. I promise I won't give you one that crazy. Um, so now that we know that, that's this piece congruent to that piece. So look at your two triangles here. What do you see? AAS. So we can say the triangles are congruent by AAS. So it would be triangle APS is congruent to triangle LIS by AAS, which means the parts will be congruent. AS will be congruent to LS by what? CPCTC. Woo! How's that? Awesome. Do you kind of love it? Like, can you at least appreciate the beauty of it? No. Oh. All I see is just a bunch of colors now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, well, this one's easier. So, this one's better. Um, I promise I won't be that mean on the test. I really promise. Why are we not moving? There we go. Okay. Second and final, and then we are done. Um, given that AE is congruent to BE and angle C is congruent to angle D, we're going to prove AD congruent to BC. Okay, overlapping triangles. What do you see? Reflexive where? AB would be reflexive. Okay, so there's one thing. Um, notice what they tell us here. AE is congruent to BE. Um, oh, that's interesting. A. No, that doesn't really help you. You could go a different route here, um, but it won't get you there. So don't go a different route. Look at this triangle. What do you know about it? It's isosceles. What do you know about isosceles triangles? The base angles are congruent. Okay, so we know because of the given information that those two angles are congruent. Let's start there. Okay, I'm going to say angle EAB is congruent to angle EBA. Why? Isosceles triangle theorem. Okay, that's the isosceles triangle theorem. If the two sides are congruent, then their base angles are congruent. Okay, so that's that. Um, now, look at the other thing they give you. They tell you that angle C and angle D are congruent. So if you look right now, you have um, in this triangle, you have this angle up top and this angle um, C. So you know two angles, and we already said there's a reflexive. So those are the triangles you're going to want to draw here. Um, so the green one, this would be C, this would be A, and this would be B. And then we'll call this one the red one. Okay, that one would be like this, where this is D, B, and A. 
Okay, so if we mark what we know right now, um, angle C congruent to angle D, that was given to us, um, we just said that the base angles are congruent. So angle A, B, C, that's this one, is congruent to angle B, A, E, or E, A, B. Um, oh, did I write that wrong? Oh, no, I used the E. That's fine. Um, so in that other triangle, that's going to be this one. Okay. Then we can say that BA is congruent to BA because it's reflexive. You already told me that one. So what do you see? AAS. We can say the triangles are congruent by AAS. So it would be triangle, um, if we say BAD, what triangle is that congruent to? ABC, right? Because we went no arc, two arcs, one arc. So no arc, two arcs, one arc. Um, so the triangles are congruent by AAS. Now look at AD is here, BC is here. That's what we were trying to prove congruent. Why are those congruent? CPCTC. Okay.